welcome to this video um, where we will be mounting the um, ESCs and waterproofing them. Um, so we're going to mount it something like this um, and one here and two up here. And in the last video I believe I told you to mount this on some vibration dampening balls like this. This is actually a really stupid idea because um, when you're trying to mount um, an ESC with those wires, it's really getting in the way and with the ESCs pushing up against them, these vibration dampening balls won't have that much e effect. Um, so you could just ahead, go ahead and mount this straight up either with some hot glue or screw it down or just anything um, and just mount um, a camera here with a lot of double-sided foam tape that should be vibration elimination enough. First of all we're going to prepare the ESCs um, for mounting on the frame and for uh, waterproofing. We want to go ahead and solder on the wires um, that we know is going to be there. So we're going to need three 33 centimeter long 16 gauge silicon wire, one blue and two black and the blue should go in the middle so I can always identify which wire is in the middle so I can easily swap two and just two 11 centimeter wires for the uh, power um, that goes up here. So first of all we're going to solder on uh, wires down here. Try turn mounting it or fitting it on the frame first to see which direction you're going to solder the wires in. So there's going to be two ACs here, one right here and one over here. Um, so this AC will have the wires soldered um, this way, not straight ahead but this way. And the AC that's going to be over here will have it soldered this way. see this goes into this direction um, because it's going to be the right mounted ESC so it is going to be right um, oriented or direction these wires um, so we want to go ahead and solder on the power wires now and remember um, the one that is also connected to the capacitors here is plus side and the one that's just alone standing alone over here is the minus side So once you've done that, it's time to uh, waterproof this. So just cut a small piece of tape like that and start it from, from here. Just so it is being kept in place. And I go ahead and take some heat shrink and put over it. And you want to cover um, everything to the wires here and up to the capacitors here. Okay, so now we're going to waterproof the ESCs. And the process is very simple actually. Um, we're going to use Plasti Dip. So what we end up want to do is basically, as you can see with this one, we want to cover the ends with Plasti Dips because it is still flexible when it is dry. So we want to cover the ends with Plasti Dip so we can make sure that no water is coming in. And what we want to do is just take a simple um, and just take um, some painter's thing right here. I don't know what that is. And then just suck up a bit of plastic dip. And then just take a small portion at a time. And um, we're going to do this side first, the side with the wires. So just take something like this and just take a little bit at a time and make sure it gets in all the spaces um, between the heat shrink and the PCB. So you can absolutely you can be absolutely sure that there's no holes in it at all and the brush is the best for this and um, you could also use something like a popsicle or something but it's much easier to just brush brush it on and you don't want to take too much the first time you just want to make sure it gets in every gap so when you're comfortable with one end um, just wait a few minutes, wait a couple of minutes till it is just settled, um, not dry, just settled so it won't drip off when you turn it around and then do the same thing for this end. So once the other side has just settled, go ahead and do it on this side as well. So remember to press the plastic dip into every gap 
there is. This is what has the water sealing effect, um, the waterproofing effect, because if we seal every gap there is, there's no way for the water to come in if we crash in a lake or anything like that. So now we've covered the side up as well, so just let it dry 10 minutes or so before we apply the next layer. So now just go ahead and let them all dry. Okay, so while we're waiting for the ESCs to dry, or the plastic dip on the ESCs to dry, um, well, we can just as well go ahead and mount the motor on the arms. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your motor mount and your motor, and you want to point the wires out where the motor mount has this bit right here that points out. So basically just go ahead and mount the, the motor with four screws, four bolts, uh, with Loctite on the motor mount um, and keep it loose because now we're just gonna slide it on here, slide it on the arm and line it up right at the end right there and then just screw in from the bottom and don't bother lining the motors up so it's completely um, level right now, we're going to do that later. And you can just as well um, cut these um, connectors off of the um, wires because we're going to hot solder them on to the wires from the ECs that we soldered on um, earlier. So just go ahead and cut those off. Alright, so once you've, your ESC is dried, the plastic dip on your ESC is dried and you're completely finished with it, what I like to do is I'm just going to take some uh, wire mesh guard here and I believe this is a blue 6mm um, wire mesh guard and I'm just going to um, cut a piece that just goes to here um, so it looks nice. The small um, wire that before it goes into the, uh, the arms. So we have just a small piece of wire mesh guard to make it look um, cool. So this is the arm that we're going to connect the EC on. Um, so what we're going to head, go ahead and do is we're going to lead these through and try if we can make a pattern um, so they don't cross over each other. Uh, that would be much easier to solder them up afterwards. And then they come out down here. And what you want to go ahead and do is you're going to lead the wires out through and just place it um, down here where you're supposed to mount that EC. So that's approximately there. And then you want to stick one wire in. I know my hands are in the way here, I'm sorry for that. You want to stick one wire in and just lock it, lock your hands onto one uh, of the wires here and lead the EC out through again as far as you can. Because then we can see right there where it it's bent, that is where we're going to cut the wire off to solder it on and cut the other wires to the same length as well. And now the easiest way I have found is to just unscrew this whole bracket right here, just completely remove this and then flip it upside down and move this to the extreme part here. So once you've de-isolated these wires you want to go ahead and pre-tin them um, with your soldering iron. Now you want to go ahead and take some heat shrink and just put a small piece of heat shrink over each wire here. Now you should solder it um, together, the rear left arm. And what I found is um, for the rear left arm and the right front arm, you should the, the blue wire is the wire in the middle as you might recall. You should not solder that to the yellow. Um, so solder this to, to the black, for example, or the red and uh, the others sort of that to, to the red and the yellow um, because that would most likely be the case um, take a uh, helping hand here just solder these two together alright, just take a piece of tape right here and put it underneath here and stick all the wires to this piece of tape but independently so this tape piece of tape will make sure that these wires of these connection do not touch each other um, because what we want to do now is we're going to check if the connections are done right um, 
because it's, it's very annoying to have mounted it all and once you're going to test it out you find out that one or two motors is actually spinning the wrong way. So we'll just spin this around to the upright position here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these the wires here, de-isolate these wires. I've gone ahead and made quite a smart solution um, if I was to say so myself. So um, it's basically something like this um, that it's the battery connector that we're going to use onto a some sort of jumper cable right here um, and just some, some glass fiber tape to make sure that if these touch each other they do not short out. And on the other hand, and we have the other end of the jumper cables. So we're going to connect this to, yes you guessed it right, the red one is going to be connected to the red one and the black one is going to be connected to the black one right there. Um, so what we're going to do is we don't want these two wires to touch any carbon or even touch each other. So um, what, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing as in the other hand. We're going to just going to take some pieces of glass fiber tape here and just just tape it around. Doesn't really matter as long as there's nothing exposed, nothing electrical exposed. So once these have been taped around, um, you want to go ahead and connect connect this EC up to a receiver, preferably the receiver that you're going to use. Um, so here's the receiver and we're going to connect it to channel 3 here, just like that. And take a battery and of course turn on your radio here. Then connect up the, the ESC here. And you heard it actually said a word, so the connections are fine and the ESCs are working fine. I'm going to show you a diagram that's coming up on the screen now. So as you can see, this is the um, front, uh, sorry, the rear left motor that we're going, that we are currently um, doing. So the rear left motor um, should be spinning um, counterclockwise. So counterclockwise will be this circle. So what, how we're going to check is, is just apply a bit of throttle so it spins up and just check with the finger which way your finger is getting pushed when you place it and you can clearly feel that the motor is going this way in this direction which is counterclockwise so we know this motor is actually um, done properly and turning in the right direction so we can go ahead disconnect power again and get it upside down again remove this tape here so what we're going to do now is we're going to just put the heat shrink over the connections okay so now you just want to go ahead and turn it upside down and then pull at pull the EC at the same time as you are pushing the motor mount in because then we the wires are not stressed from any side and then just go ahead and mount the motor here at the end of the arm. So now we're going to mount the ESC. Um, because there's no space for the power module up here, we're going to have the power module um, underneath. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, to lead the power wires, power wires under um, under the, uh, the frame here. And we're going to experience just mount it where you think um, on your on your port that the wires is the least stressed. Just go ahead and pull it up because that was just a test fitting um, and we want to go ahead and grab some double sided foam tape. So this is just one layer but as you can see it is very uneven so apply a second layer just like that and that's much more even um, than the first layer. Go ahead and peel the plastic protection here off. So you want to just slowly press it just like that and press it in. So that's how we mount an ESC. So just go ahead and do this exactly the same process for all the other ESCs. And thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. That will support me a lot in making these videos come and making new builds come. Um, so thank you for watching. Bye.